Good morning and welcome to Hometown Church. My name is Pam Lanhart and I'm from the hometown Lakeville location. And we are so glad that you're joining us here this morning as we continue our series, Own Your Past, Change Your Future. Now last week, Spencer talked about anger and how anger can really inhibit our relationship with God. And this week, Kit is sharing with us about trauma. And we all have experienced trauma in our life, some big T traumas, some smaller ones, but those traumatic events can actually change our brain. Therefore, it can change our relationship with God. And when you're sitting in that trauma, you might ask yourself, where is God and what is he doing in this situation? So Kit's gonna talk about where he is and how he uses things for good and just how that can change your relationship with the Lord. Now, I also wanna mention that Hometown Church has three in-person locations. We consider ourselves sort of the ace hardware of churches. We're not a big mega church where you might just get lost in the crowd and we're not a teeny tiny church. So I promise you won't feel awkward when you walk through the door, but we are a church that creates a welcoming community. This hasn't uh, has been so apparent to us as over the last couple months, we've walked through this journey with our daughter who has brain cancer and our community in Lakeville has really come alongside of her and served her with meals, with transportation, with childcare, with cleaning. And we know that that would not have happened or been possible had it not been for our beautiful church community. So we invite you to come and join us in person, engage in that community, make meaningful connections, and we know you'll just feel really grateful that you did. So we're gonna go into a time of worship in a minute, but first let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this beautiful, gorgeous weather weekend. We are so grateful that you're a God that brings us sunshine into our lives, even in some of the darkest experiences, even when we have experienced loneliness, depression, anxiety, anger, trauma, that you're always there with us. And we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for Kit, and we just pray a blessing over him today as he shares the message about how you are with us even when we experience difficult circumstances. Lord, thank you for that. And thank you for this time of worship that we're gonna be entering into. God, we are so grateful that you are a God that we can worship. Open up our hearts so that we can hear what you want us to hear today during this message. We thank you and praise you for all of this this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him 
freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive When we praise you The God of praise praise you. We praise you that you are our great provider. You are Jaira. Lord God, help us to learn to be content whatever our circumstances. Whether we're in plenty or in need, whether we are well-fed or hungry, God, please help us, humble us. Help us to remember that it's from your hand that everything comes, everything that's good comes from you. And you are Jaira, the great provider. We praise you right now, Lord. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm, but I won't go down I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me Cross an ocean so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. You are a child, you are in love. Child. See so clear what it's all about. So stay by my side when the sun goes down. And don't wanna forget how I feel right now, Jaira. Jaira, you are enough. Jaira.
And for those of you who did not know, I was born in Haiti. And when I was five years old, my parents divorced and my dad dropped me off to my grandma's house and left. Could you imagine being five and one of your parents dropped you off at your grandparents' house and left you there and, and, and not coming back for you? So I lived with my grandma for a couple of years. And my grandma had an opportunity to move to the U.S., so she took it. And then I went to live with my mom, who also got an opportunity to move to the U.S. a few years later, so she took it. And then I moved with one of my aunts, but not too long after, she also got an opportunity to move to the U.S., so she took it. I ended up moving with my cousins. As you can see, there was a pattern of family members moving away or taking opportunity somewhere else because their belief, moving to the U.S., they would have better opportunities. They hope to get jobs and send money back to their families so their loved one would be better off. However, while this practice of leaving children behind with relatives for better opportunities was coming in the culture, but they did not consider the emotional impact the practice will have on the children. As a result, as some of the children suffer from a traumatic stress called emotional abandonment. Emotional abandonment is when a child's emotional needs are not being met by their primary caregiver. My traumatic events of people whom I love constantly leaving me in inadequate emotional care created me a fear of abandonment. And, and I was not aware of it. This fear of abandonment has affected my relationships with others. Whenever I would find myself in a relationship and it began to get serious, I would break it off because I believe it was better for me to leave before the other person did, so I would not feel abandoned. As a result, all of my relationships were shallow and never deep. I built a wall to protect me, but as a result, I burned so many bridges. A couple years after I became a Christian, I started to realize how much I was pushing people away. And even though my friends were trying to tell me that, I was pushing them away 
but I couldn't see it. So I began uh, to pray for God to help me. But unfortunately, nothing changed. It took several years of a lot of prayers, uh, talking to people and, and counseling before I finally began to have healthy relationships and allow people into my life. Experiencing painful and traumatic events directly or indirectly, it can leave us feeling broken and wounded. But what is trauma? Trauma refers to an, an, an emotional reaction triggered by an intense event that either causes or poses a threat of harm. Trauma can be direct or indirect. And the signs uh, and symptoms of indirect trauma resemble to those of direct trauma. But not everyone reacts to experiences in the same way. What may cause trauma to one person may not affect another. Nevertheless, all of us experience some types of trauma, directly or indirectly. And each one of us deals with these experiences differently. Your traumatic experiences. It could be the home you were born in or the way you grew up. Or it could be one of your parents or both parents were addicted. It could be your, you were neglected or abused physically, emotionally, and sexually. It could be a loved one passed away or a loved one is suffering from some type of sickness. It could be an accident you were part of or you were exposed to school violence or being bullied. In response to these traumatic experiences, you may build walls around your heart to protect yourself from a further hurt or put a mask of happiness to fit in with society. Unfortunately, these walls or the mask can also keep you from truly connecting with others and with God. And you may even blame God for your struggles. As a result, you may have an unhealthy view of God or feel unworthy of his love and acceptance. And your struggles, you might feel that God is distant from you. You see his presence in the lives of others and, and, and you long uh, to, to, for the joy that they are experiencing. It seems like your traumatic experiences, your sorrow, your anxiety, or your depression uh, seem to linger too long. And, and you might be wondering how long you have to deal with these issues or difficulties. You want to feel normal and live the life God has for you. But these experiences are weighing you down. You want to go forward with your future. But these traumatic pains are keeping you hostage. This is where your battle begins. At the crossroad of your traumatic pains and the promise of God. This is where your painful trauma meets God's plan for you. So the question that we are asking ourselves this morning that we're going to try to answer is this. How? Do you move forward from your traumatic pains to the plan God has for you? How do we make the jump from where we are to where God wants us to be? How do we go beyond the despair of, a, of our painful experiences and, and go forward to the future that God has for us? How do we heal from traumatic experiences? Let's pray. God, we just pray for this message. Lord, we ask God that you'll give us ears to hear and a heart to understand. Lord, we pray that you reveal yourself to us this morning in a new way. In Jesus' name, amen. We are 
and the second week of our series. On your past, change your future. And last week, uh, Pastor Spencer talked about anger, and he said anger is a secondary emotion, and he used the example of Moses to help us see how anger can come side can come out sideways, and that simply means we almost always feel some other emotion before we resort to anger. And this morning. We are going to talk about anger. We are going to talk about uh, trauma, not anger, trauma. And we are going to look at a man in the Bible who dealt with so many traumatic events. And this man's name is David. And he is known as the man after God's own heart. His life was full of traumas. His family uh, did not value him. So when the prophet Samuel came to his father's house to anoint the next king, his family did not consider him worthy to be the next king. So they left him in the field. And after he was anointed as the next king of Israel, who would replace King Saul, King Saul was so jealous and wanted to kill him. So King Saul made it his mission to kill David. As a result, David was always on the run, trying to stay alive. While King David was hiding in Ziglag from King Saul, he and his men went to war. And when they got back, all their families were taken as slaves. So his men blamed him for the traumatic event and wanted to stone him. David experiences many other traumatic events, and we don't have time this morning to go through them all. But in Psalm 13, King David was dealing with traumatic stresses that brought pain into his soul. The psalm does not pinpoint a specific event, but it is clear that the painful experiences were not new. And these experiences were chaotic, dark, and overwhelming. These experiences caused David to be an unemotional funk and and disoriented. This emotional funk created a fog that blinded David to the point he felt God had turned away from him since he could not see or hear God. In his difficult situation, David asked, Oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? These two verses show us the struggle that David was dealing with has been going on for a while because he asked how long four times. David's painful experience was a recurring situation because when sadness just hits, People don't immediately question how long unless it is an ongoing experience. David is expressing a feeling of abandonment by God. So he questioned if God has forgotten him. And David's mind is conflicted because his heart is filled with sorrow. Maybe. You are dealing with a lingering situation and might be asking God the same question. Maybe you have been praying for deliverance or breakthrough for a while, but still there is no answer. Maybe you might be in an emotional funk that causes you not to process the truth of God's grace properly. You have been asking how long for so long and now you might feel there is no hope and you are ready to give up. When I was a counselor at a high school, a student rushed into my office to tell me that a girl passed out in the bathroom. So I rushed out of my office to check, to check out the student. It was one of my students. The student overdosed in the bathroom. The student grew up in a Christian home and was praying a lot about her traumatic stresses. 
but due to the dysfunction that she had to deal with at home and, and her own anxiety and depression issues when she got the news that her parents were planning to get divorced. She did not have the emotional capacity to handle another traumatic stress. So she felt the best way to cope with the stress was to take her life. She brought two bottles of Tylenol to the school. And by the time I got, I got to the bathroom, she had already swallowed a full bottle. 911 was called and the ambulance took her to the hospital where her stomach was pumped. She survived the suicide attempt, but everyone was in shock and asked why she wanted to take her life. Her mind was conflicted with emotions because her heart was filled with sorrow, which led her to believe the only way to heal her pain was to take her life. People tend to interpret their trauma with lies. So how did David get out of his emotional funk? His traumatic experiences were real. They were present. When our brain is in a fog because our heart is in pain, we, we tend not to sense God's presence. Our emotional funk make us think that God has abandoned us and he is not a good God. And how come a good God and a perfect God allow bad things to happen to us or allow us to go through struggles? In David's traumatic experiences, he turns to God in prayer. David prayed, turn and answer me, O Lord, my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. And David asked God for three things in this verse. And David's traumatic experiences caused him to feel that God had turned away from him. So he asked God to turn or to see me or to look at me. What David is saying, God, please don't turn your back on me. When people are dealing with traumatic stresses, they are constantly tired and anxious and depressed and feel lonely. David has been on the run for a while and now he is tired and feels the person who was always there for him has turned his back on him. In his desperation, he asked, God, please turn around and see me. Then David asked God this, answer me or hear me. David is pleading with God to answer his questions. David is dealing with all types of emotions, confusion, sadness, anxiety, agitation, and alienation. And these emotions were blinding David to not seeing God. And they were playing tricks in his mind, causing him to not see God's goodness. So he made, he made his third request by asking God, to restore the sparkle to my eyes. David is asking God to put the light back in his eyes again so he can see God through his disorientation, disorientation phase. God made a promise to David that David will be the next king, but it seems like there was no kingship in the distant future. Instead of sitting on the throne ruling, he was constantly running for his life. He could not see the goodness of God and the promise of God was blurred to him. His trauma affected his belief about the future that God promised him. So David pleaded with God to see him, to hear him, and put the light back in his eyes. David pointed his prayer to God, not his doctor, not his therapist, not his family, not his parents, or not his friends. The verse 
tells that, that David calls God Jehovah, O Lord, which means Jehovah, and it reflects God's promises. And David also say, my God, which reflects uh, God's power. In other words, he calling God Elohim. David's prayer sounds like this. O God of promise and power, I appeal to you. David knew that God was powerful. He is the one who spoke everything into existence with a word. The same powerful God sees all things and keep all of his promises. At that moment, a transformation occurred in David's heart and mind. David was reoriented and there was a sudden joy. He understood that God is still God whether the lights are on or off. In other words, God is always good. God is always good. Can you say it with me? God is always good. Earlier, I said that it took several years before I was healed from my traumatic experiences. And during these years, I spent a lot of time in prayers, meeting with a mentor and seeing a counselor. And they were helping me change my behavior by changing my belief system. My beliefs were not based on truth, but lies that were influencing my emotions and behavior. For example, when my relationship was getting serious, I got triggered which gave me a false belief that the person might leave. So I acted out by ending the relationship or pulling away from the relationship. The idea of me ending the relationship was not the actual problem. I had to learn to practice my feelings backward to isolate my sets of beliefs. It looks like this. So we tend to go this way, so if the arrow is pointing the other way, that's what we tend to do. We tend uh, to have a set of beliefs, that's our thinking, and the set of beliefs create an emotion within us, and then we got triggered, and then we act out. That's the way we tend to go. But with the help of my mentor in counseling, I realized something. I realized that I was acting out because of an emotion that I was feeling from a set of beliefs that I have. And that set of belief was based on lies. There is a cognitive behavior therapy technique I call ICR that I use and was very helpful to me. So the ICR stand for identify the lie, confront or challenge the lie, and replace the lie with the truth. If you want to learn more about these two concepts, we did a series back in, in October 2022 called Triggered. You can go online to view the series. And, and by the way, uh, Brent will uh, also talk more about changing your thought process next week. So back, back, back to David. In Psalm 13, we see David use this technique to interpret his trauma. And David had interpreted his trauma, his traumatic experience with a lie. He thought that God was absent from him and that his enemies would triumph over him. David confronted the lie. That's the second thing. He confronted the lie with what he knew to be true about God. So David pleaded with God to see him, to hear him, and put the light back in his eyes again because he knew what was true about God. His feeling was, in, was not acting that way. I don't know where you are this morning. Your traumatic experiences might be throwing you into an emotional funk to the point that you might be believing in a lie. It seems like 
When people are dealing with traumatic stresses, they tend to blame God and run away from God or any place that bears God's name. So how did David find healing for his soul? He begins to confront the lie so he can see God again. David realized the truth of God's grace, so he replaced the lie with the truth. And he said, but I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. When David confronted the lie that he believed in and replaced it with the truth, his traumatic stresses did not immediately disappear. But he was comforted by God's peace. David's heart was renewed and God answered his prayer by putting the light back in his eyes again. If you are suffering from traumatic stresses or you might know someone who is, would you consider to pray? If you feel that God has abandoned you, go to God. And be honest about your feelings of despair and doubt. Ask God to see you, to hear you, and to put the light back in your eyes so you can see his goodness. The truth is that God is always good. So you must believe and anticipate his goodness will free you from all your traumatic experiences. Would you also consider to seek help? The most important thing to remember is that most people will recover from feeling of distress that were caused by a traumatic experience. It might take days, weeks, months, or even years. If you are dealing with a traumatic stress, reach out to a friend, your pastor, or a counselor. Or contact your primary doctor and talk to him or her about your symptoms. Remember, your traumatic experiences can cause mental health issues which can disrupt your day-to-day -day activity. And some traumatic experiences have the capacity to mess with your brain in the form of chemical imbalances. That means you might not be able to get better without some form of counseling or medical attention. Throughout the process, continue to pray and seek God. None of us, none of us are exempt from traumatic experiences. If David and Jesus can wrestle with sorrow, sadness, and the feeling of abandonment, so will you and so will I. Uh, Jesus had experienced traumatic stresses that left them wrestling with the feeling of abandonment. And abandonment is, is probably one of the worst emotional experiences anyone can suffer. Abandonment can lead to an emotional frenzy as we realize the one we depended on most have left us and forgotten us at the moment of greatest need. When it comes to Jesus, we tend to focus on the physical pain he had endured the scourging, the crown of thorns, and the nails in his feet and hands, but forget the terrible emotional trauma he endured. After Jesus was arrested and accused of a crime he did not commit, his disciples deserted him. The man whom he had taught and eaten with for, for the last three years were nowhere to be found. One of them, betrayed him to the authorities for 30 pieces of silver, while another denied him three times. The most unbearable of all was the abandonment Jesus felt by his father while hanging on the cross. And Jesus expressed the way he felt with a loud voice. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The God whom Jesus had been in relationship with daily now was completely silent and distant at the hour Jesus needed him the most. 
in Jesus' disoriented face. He questioned God's presence in his life. Why did Jesus feel that God had abandoned him? He was innocent. He had done nothing to deserve God to turn his back on him. He was holy. He was pure. He was harmless and obedient. God placed the sin of the world on his son. And at that moment, Christ who never sinned became sin for us. And at that moment, God expressed his hatred of sin by turning his back on his son. God cannot look upon sin, so he turned his back. The burden was not fully upon Jesus. And the reality of the wrath of God for sin revealed itself in full. Jesus was made a sin offering and died in our place so he might bring us near to God. Jesus endured both physical and emotional suffering to save us from eternal death. Jesus did not allow his emotional funk to linger and get the best of him because he knew the nature of God remains unchanged regardless of the situation. In other words, God is always good. Can you say it with me? God is always good. In the midst of his traumatic stress, he believed that there was hope for deliverance. He still has trust in God, the Father. And even when he could not feel God under the weight of sin of the world, with his dying breath, Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. Jesus saw the goodness of God in the midst of his situation, in the midst of his difficulties. Are you having a hard time seeing the goodness of God in the midst of your troubles, your difficulties, or the trauma you are facing may seem like the vast ocean or the Red Sea and, and, and you might feel overwhelmed and drowning and you have prayed uh, to God for help many times, but it feels like he is not answering. You have asked God to throw you uh, a floating device or, or, or send you a rescue boat so you would not drown, but there is only silence if this is you this morning. I want to encourage you to hold on. God is all powerful and he has a plan for you. He knows the perfect timing to act. Perhaps God is not sending you the floating device you asked for because he knows the roughness of your Red Sea would destroy the floating device. Maybe. He is not sending you the rescue boat you asked for because he knows the waves are too high and dangerous for the boat. Maybe God wants to perform a miracle in your life that only he can do. God wants to part the Red Sea of your difficulties, of your trauma, and make way for you to walk on dry ground. Jesus believed that his hope was in God, not his feeling. So this morning, I am inviting you to do the same thing in your life that David and Jesus did in the midst of their difficulties. Their belief, God is always good. Can you say it with me one more time? God is always good. Will you choose to believe, regardless of the situation, that God is always good? Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are always good. And you're proving that over 
and over and over and over again. God, in the midst of our difficulties, in the midst of our traumatic experiences, help us to see. Open our eyes so we can see that you are always good. Amen. Thank you, Kit, for that message. What really struck me is in Psalm 13, 5, it says that we can always, always trust you. We know that God is with us. We know that God cares for us, even in some of the darkest times. So this week when you're journaling and you're having your time with the Lord, just think about how God has been with you, even through some of those extremely difficult circumstances. Now remember, come check us out in person at any of our three locations. You can find that information at Hometown Church. Dot com. And join us again next week as we continue this series, Owning Our Past, Changing Our Future. Have a great week.